Today is the first Sunday of Advent in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. God told Abraham that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. In Genesis 12 verses 1 to 2 we read, The Lord has said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. The Old Testament spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. We too believe in God's promise to bless all people through Jesus, and we believe Jesus will come again to this world to bring light into the darkness and to establish his kingdom upon earth. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and all-loving God, your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and the Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready, and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Hi there. I'm Pastor Bill Evans, and uh, glad to be part of our Chetwin uh, Fellowship of Pastors. Um, we have a, a good time together. And uh, somebody got the idea that we should uh, be, uh, Marlon's behind us, of course, from uh, Chet TV, that we should uh, have services to put on the air. And so we sat down and had a big meeting with him and talked about uh, Advent. And um, here we are, uh, starting to celebrate Advent. And um, we, uh, I get to do, go first. Uh, the the uh, candle of hope was lit. Um, Hope is an interesting word. I, I, I think I'm a hopeful person. Uh, uh, and, and the biggest thing about hope is that people don't understand what hope is. And, and through years of preaching and whatever, uh, you, you go across the subject of hope lots of times. And um, uh, there's just certain points that the Bible talks about regarding the subject of hope that is important. And we want to just look at some of those today briefly if we can together. Hope is indeed something intimately involved in the Christmas story. And uh, the, the word might not itself be used, but the idea is there, and uh, we want to uh, touch on that in, in a few moments. So if I can just start off with a prayer, let's ask God to bless and help us in our discussion, and then we'll carry on. God, we bless you and thank you for the wonderful Christmas season, the uh, time when Jesus would step into time and uh, uh, from eternity past to eternity in the future. He is God, and, uh, but he took time to... Uh, uh, come down. Your word says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And so we know that the Christmas story uh, was to come so that eventually we would have the Easter story. And we, so we bless you, God. But in the meantime, we have, and throughout history, as was said uh, in our reading, that uh, you came to give hope to a world that was lost in darkness and perishing in their sin. And so we bless you, God, for the work of Jesus and the hope that we have in him. And as we look into this word, we pray your spirit to attend and help us because we ask your presence and your blessing and your help in the precious name of that one who was born in Bethlehem's manger, Jesus our Lord. Amen. We uh, want to first consider the idea of hope defined. Uh, the world has a different concept of uh, defining what, what the idea of hope is about, and it really stems more upon the Christmas calendar, uh, the Christmas catalog, uh, from in the old days used to be Sears, and now it's uh, Wayfair and everything. You just Google online, and you can get all the stuff you need. I wish for this, I wish for this, I wish for this, and it's, or I hope for this. And the word hope is not tied up. And that's, a, that's just a wish list. And um, they're, they're two different things. And so the world in which we live uh, has to deal with um, their, their attitude there. They, they don't, they're not really interested in, in, in the concept of what, what 
hope really is. And, but I'd like to just share some thoughts this morning from the Word of God uh, for our hearts. Ephesians 6, verse 17, uh, Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, uh, tells the church, and it's a profound letter, but in there he just makes this story, and, and you see sometimes in precious moments, cartoons and whatever, little guy with a, with a sword, and he's got on a helmet, and he's got on a breastplate of righteousness, and his shoes are shod with little shoes because he's ready to go and tell the story of the gospel of peace. And um, so, but they, they the helmet that he wears is called a helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. And um, uh, so that's Paul's reference to Ephesians. But when he comes to the book of Thessalonians, he talks to those guys and, and he's writing to them. And he says, First uh, Thessalonians 5 and verse 8, uh, and he makes this statement, and I'll read it. And um, uh, it says this, it says, But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So then he ties in the idea of hope as being like a helmet on our head. Uh, the, the Greek has an interesting word. It's two words put together. One is round, like for a round, peri, uh, the, the, the perimeter and whatever. Um, and, and peri and the other word is head. So it's round head. Uh, one of the nurses at the hospital used to call babies all the time, a little round head. But this word is something, that the helmet goes around your head. It covers over, it comes down and covers your head. And uh, remember in the story of David and Goliath, he didn't seem to have that little spot right there in the temple covered. And David hit him in the cocoa between the lamps, as Billy Sunday said it years ago. The helmet didn't fit right. But the helmet of salvation is, the hope of salvation is like a helmet on our head. And we, we, we live in the year uh, 2020, and it's just been a, a hellish year. There's been so many struggles and so many issues. And what? But God says we don't have to fear if you have on the helmet. What helmet? The helmet of salvation. It's like a, a crusty outside, uh, you know, your, your bike helmet. And uh, one of the saddest things I had ever done in my ministry as a pastor was go in and count up hospital into a, 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 into a, a ER room with a family. And there's a young man laying there, and he'd been hit by a car, and he fell off his bike, and he banged his head. He didn't have a helmet, I don't believe. But he's there, and they're going to unplug him. And he's laying there, just laying there, and breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And we're there to have prayer and to commit his spirit to God because they believed he was, in the brain, dead, and they were going to harvest organs. That's the strangest thing to ever have to do something like that, to say goodbye with a family to a young man whose head was broken by not having the proper helmet. Helmet, the idea of the helmet is that protection there. Hope is that which protects us. When our, the walls of our churches are there, I tell people here, our walls are here to hold up the roof, not to keep people out especially when we're inside having a service. Our walls are there. And so when you come to the door of the church, if you, you thought the place you looked inside and the place was looking like the ceiling was hanging down here, you might not want to come in. But you look around, it looks pretty solid. And, and so you have confidence. And that's the word uh, um, I want to get us to for the real meaning of hope. It's got this idea of confidence. It's got the idea of certainty. It's got the idea of expectation. Do you see it's not wishful thinking? It's got confidence, it's got certainty, it's got expectation is in that story as you would expect our walls to hold up the roof here. So you enter believing that the walls will hold up that roof. You're confident of that. Wishful thinking is only that the preacher might not preach too long. That fits there if you wish. So this word hope, it has some noticeable markings, some noticeable markings. Uh, things that uh, come with hope. If we have hope in our lives, if we have confidence in our lives as we go through life, um, we, and, and we're confident that we, we know God, uh, that, we, uh, that we can uh, just trust him with whatever comes down the path of life. Because we do not know uh, what tomorrow brings. We have but today. Yesterday is, is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is called the present. And so we enjoy our present that we have. And so in this present that we have, uh, this is all what we are sure of. We have this right now. We don't know if we have 10 minutes from now and, and such, but we, we have this hope. 
And, and so there's certain markings that come with the subject of hope. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9, uh, right after the one we read already, it says, it says this. He says, um, there it goes, for, the, for God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God is not interested. He says in the scriptures, God's not interested in the death of anybody. He, he like that when men would come to repentance and that they would um, have help from God to know him and to walk with him. That's God's great interest. That's it. So he wants us to have hope. And of course, Jeremiah, uh, he says, I know the plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope, a confidence that you can face the days that are ahead. This is his desire. Hope has uh, noticeable markings. You know markings, they put up the ones, and uh, the funny ones out here by the motel, orange curb, you're not supposed to park there. Uh, and truckers always park there. Uh, do you not see the yellow or are you colorblind? Uh, it's a whatever. Markings. Hope has markings. Uh, one of the things, uh, beloved, is, is here in, in, in the, I said about the, the, the Christmas story. When uh, Simeon, they brought Jesus in on the eighth day to be circumcised and to have, he, he meets this child that he had long expected. And the word expected is that word of hope. He was confident he was coming one day. He had a word from God. He would not die until he saw the salvation of the Lord. This was, so he was confident of it. He was expecting it. Strangely, that same word that is used there about expectations, like you invited somebody for supper, as I have some of you, I invite you for supper, I expect you to be there, at least tell me you're not going to be. You invited guests for supper, and they are, they're going to ring the doorbell and come in, and maybe bring you flowers, or bring some chocolate, or do whatever they do, but you're expecting them. The same word is used of Jesus, they says, and the Pharisees were upset because he hangs out with sinners, and, and, he, and he was like he was expected, and, and he hung out with these sinners. It was in um, uh, the Luke 15, verse 2, and he talks about it. They looked on him, and, and he hung out with sinners, and it was like, well, yeah, that's what he does. He had this confidence. There was, he was confident, this was my job, my role was to hang out with sinners. Isaiah 30, verse 15 Old Testament says, in quietness and confident trust, if you wish, my version says, in quietness and confident trust will be your strength. Peace is one of the candles that we light for our Advent season and uh, one of the different weeks. And, and peace, is, it comes, it's, this quietness is peace. Peace in our hearts, in the midst of all the turmoil and all that's going on in the world, and, and peace reigns in our heart, and peace gives us joy, and peace gives us uh, all those things that we, we celebrate in the Advent time, um, and, and all through our faith relationship with Christ, it's all there. The word hope is found in the book of Hebrews, and uh, that's a um, wonderful book. Uh, just doing some studies in now, but Hebrews 6.18 makes an interesting statement, and it reads this way. Uh, first off, he's talking in, back a ways, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible, impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. That God sets before us a hope. I give you a future and a hope, something set before you. You can be confident of this. What is our confidence? Our confidence is that the word of God is alive, it's real, his promises are true. Uh, someone asked me the other day, what's this book of the Bible about? And, and to say that, well, over about 1,400 years of 40 different writers writing, the interesting thing about the Bible is what? That there's one theme in the whole of that book, beginning to end. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he spoke all things into being, it says. He's coming at the end. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And so he says, have this strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us from beginning to end in our Scripture. And then, beloved, this, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast. Hope anchors our soul. Hope holds us down when the, when the storms of life are hitting and, and whatever. And so we see in Florida and the, the storms come through and the boats are all kind of moored up and whatever and they're trying not to be beaten around and they're anchored there and they're tied down and whatever. I, I love comedy and uh, 
Lauren Elliott, uh, after the Vancouver, when the ferry, remember when the ferry dock run into the, uh, uh, ferry went into the dock there and did a whole whack of damage. And they said when they did a big study back, what happened? Well, the brakes didn't work. He says, well, what happened to the anchor? Like you got one right on your crest on your shoulder. Uh, why, why didn't someone drop anchor? And they didn't. And we laugh about that. Um, did anybody think to drop anchor? Anchors are supposed to stop and to hold in the midst of the storm, in the midst of something going wrong. And here we have an anchor that says, keeps the soul steadfast and sure as the billows roll, as our hymn says, an anchor uh, of the soul, sure and steadfast. Do you get the idea? It's about confidence. It's not about willy-nilly, wishful thinking, what I might get and whatever. If I, if I follow God today, I might get this and I might get that. Uh, you might not get what you want, but you get that which is blessed and better for you as you trust and have your hope and confidence in Him. We did an acrostic one time uh, years ago for the word hope, where you take uh, each letter of the uh, word and make a, make a word for it to spell it out. And so an acrostic for hope could be something like, uh, how's our preaching, eh? That'd be a Canadian version of an acrostic for hope. How's our preaching, eh? But in Matthew 3.16, uh, and one time, beloved, if you want to try something, go through your Bible, because we know John 3.16, right? Find all the other 316s in your Bible. I tease the ladies in my church. Leviticus 316 says, all the fat is the Lord's. All the fat is the Lord's. And, and so people worry about weight, whatever. You're just more given to God, uh, whatever. There's just so many, those verses, just it's an interesting study by itself. Matthew 316 says, uh, Jesus was baptized. And when he came up out of the water, it says, the heavens opened and a dove descended. And a voice from heaven said, what? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And uh, so my, my acrostic for hope is this. In the day in which we live and after Jesus died on the cross and whatever, this was what happened. Heaven was opened. Heaven was made available to everybody to, to come. And so in, in Matthew 3, verse 2, before this baptism service, John the Baptist has come, and he says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heaven's open. The last part of it is, please enter. Please enter. John 5, 24 says, He who here has... Uh, let me find that. John 5, uh, he who has... Um, I'm going to get her right over this page. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. He who hears my word and believes on him who sent me has eternal life. That's a promise. So he says, heaven's open. Please enter. How do you do that? He who has my words has eternal life. We come to Jesus, and we, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him has what? Everlasting life. Those people have passed from death into life as they've come to relationship with Jesus Christ. Christmas season just wasn't given to have a celebration of joy and presence and all those things. All those things are to point to the fact that God has a hope for us in Christ Beyond our grave, it's like a, a helmet of salvation upon us that were I to die uh, and whatever, if I have a relationship with Jesus, I can go to be in his presence. Heaven's open. Please enter. Matthew 23, verse 13. Jesus got in the face of the Pharisees. What was the issue with the Pharisees? They were full of themselves. Don't you just love people who are full of themselves? Well, let me tell you about myself. Let me tell you what I did, what I did, whatever. And they're full of themselves. And those were the Pharisees of Jesus' day. And he fought with them by way of speaking all the time. They tried to run him down, whatever. He correct them. They get upset and whatever. And verse 23 of Matthew, he makes this statement. He says, you guys, you don't want to go to heaven. But you want to get in the way of everybody else who does. And he says, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people for you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. You see, heaven is open. And the Pharisees tried to stop people, stop following Paul. The, later on, changed by the Spirit of God, uh, papers in his pocket to stop those people talking about being able to think they can go to heaven and uh, uh, be with Jesus one day. He says, you guys are in trouble. 
don't be like the Pharisee mind, full of self, and then standing in the way, and standing in the way of others, or not yourself entering into the uh, fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. But the way's made open. The way's made open. Heaven's open. Please enter. In this Christmas season, may you seriously consider what's your relationship with Jesus Christ? What is it? Uh, is he just some man that you heard about? Curse words you hear at the bar, do whatever, or if you hit your finger? Um, or is he somebody that you realize died for your sin? He came to earth in the Christmas story, and he went to the cross uh, later on. We sing a powerful song in our church, and most churches, I suppose, would sing it. I'll try to get the words here. And um, it's, uh, you were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus, Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. And this part here is what struck me. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great. Your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Let's pray. Father, we bless you that in our Savior Jesus Christ we have a wonderful hope. A hope that though whatever happens in our world, we can stand before the presence of our God one day and hear, well done, a good and faithful servant. Welcome into the presence of your Lord. And we just ask God that this Christmas season, people's hearts would be touched to know the joy of the Lord, the hope of the Lord, the peace of God that passes understanding and the wonderful great love of God shown in Jesus Christ. And we just pray your blessing. We commit our Christmas spirit over the Chetwin area to your care and keeping that you'll work mightily and do great things. We thank you for Chet TV allowing us to put these messages out there. We pray that hearts will be blessed. We thank you and we ask that your peace and joy and hope and love may prevail upon our community through this season. All because what? It was, was accomplished in he who came to Bethlehem. We thank you and bless you for this time in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
For the past 14 years, Chetwin BC has been giving artists a chance to carve their dreams. Artists come from all over the world in June and leave us with stunning sculptures. Wood plays a vital role in this town. It's ingrained everywhere you look. I like the hippo, and uh, even though my buddy here uh, carved the moose last year I bought off of him, I still have to go with the hippo this year. What do you like about it? I just like it's different. It's completely different from what we've seen up here. We don't see a lot of that uh, African type things. You know, it's all eagles, bears, and it's all that kind of stuff. So that's just unique this year, so that's why I'm voting for it this year. What are you carving? Uh, yeah, I carve a uh, hippo and a rhino. Why? Uh, my, my son, favorite animal. <laughs> it's an important, almost confession of, she changed me. And so he wanted to honor her in a way by having her check and saying, wow, she's exceptional. She's not someone who just messes around in fancy outfits. She's an educated person to be respected. Oh heck, everybody wants to be in the top three, but just to be here, I'm happy. If I could pull it off and have it look somewhat like a woman, even Gaga, that would be great. As long as it doesn't look like Harmon Munster, I think I've done my job. Look in my eyes and hold me tight